Okay, so here's a look at our forming system. It's basically based around two foot by eight foot, inch and an eighth, MDO or HDO panels. Look at how many plies there are, right? Okay. Some of our lighter color panels are HDO. That's high density overlay, they'll last longer. These guys are medium density overlay. That's what we've always used. It's like an extra five bucks per panel to go with the HDO. <laughs> by the way, most of our panels we bought the price was pretty consistent at about $37 per panel. We recently paid $81 per panel. So there's a look at pricing. This is why everything is expensive. Anyway, inch and an eighth, two foot by eight foot. You can buy four foot by eight foot, but those are pretty heavy. So we just stick with the two by eights, inch and an eighth. Here's how it works. This is called a spreader cleat. It goes on top of the wall, it goes on the bottom of the wall. What we like to do is once our footings are raised to grade, right before we pour concrete, we reshoot square, we tack nails that represent the outside of the walls. Once we place concrete, then we can set these. We can either dry line or snap a line, put a nail right through the hole. So that sits on the bottom, concrete pours around it, it's there permanently. So here's how that works. Imagine that this is the top of the footing. Panel slips in like that. Panel slips in like that. Okay, so spreader cleat at the top, spreader cleats at the bottom. Essentially, we're relying on the strength of the panel. Now, as we start to stack panels like you see here, and this guy we went up to 10 feet, it's easy, stacking two foot at a time, right? Okay, so this is a snap tie. This fits on top of the wall. It has a washer, and I'll show you how that works. So the washers fit inside the wall. What we like to do is these are called shoes or wedges. Hang them. Go ahead and set your panel. I'm gonna go ahead and cleat the top just so it doesn't fall on my head. Okay, so there's how that works. Now all you do is flip these over. Finger tight. And that's it. So after we pour concrete, we're gonna strip the walls. You know, the next day, days later, it all depends pop these off and then bust off the snap ties or snap them off. Snap ties stay, shoes, you buy them one time and you just keep reusing them. These stay in the concrete so you're paying for these on each job. Where my ladder is currently in this portion of the video is a bedroom. So that means that we need to have a window that is big enough for egress and a window well so somebody can actually climb out in the case of a disaster, a fire, something like that. So I go from 10 foot walls to eight foot, then down to two foot for the window, back up to four feet, and then it goes behind the camera. And that's just for dirt grade. You can kind of see the neighbor's driveway up on the top left there. So <laughs> as we frame this house later this year, well, I'll be curious to see just how all this finally works out. But for the purpose of this video, I have ripped down Gracias. whatever scrap material we have for framing. Like, uh, like, so normally for rafters, I'll order extra two by 12. Oh, like that way I can ones. use the pretty ones. The ugly ones get cut into other things. For example, buckouts. <laughs> so these actually were mostly left over from the previous foundation. Those came out of rafters. Anyway, I digress. So I have to buck out six feet of wall to get down to that two foot panel. So the way I like to do it is just shove it in there. You saw that I had to loosen the shoes. Once I tighten those shoes, this is gonna be a lot of pressure. So I screw in the top, check it for plumb, then I put a screw in the bottom, and then I go ahead and I just stitch up the whole thing while I'm there. I 
I'm using screws. These are the Simpson Strong Tie Flaming Screws, code listed. They're stronger than nails. It's easier on the body. As you can see, there's no impact to the body. <laughs> the impact driver is taking all of it or making all of the impact. It's also gonna be super easy to strip. Again, easier on the body. That one will be good, yeah. So, yeah, that'll be good. And then you can do the rest, just maybe not the top until we have the eye joist. Okay. Sweetness. Sweetness, dude. Ah, darn it means I have to go rip another one of these. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Have <laughs> I ever told you that you're loud, man? Me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, those impactors without hearing protection. Okay, well, do I care? I guess I could hold it high. three quarters on the panel. I guess I'll just do that. Pretty good. Oh yeah, awesome framers. Hey man, that rule number happens. 17 of the top 10 rules for awesome framing and doing other things in life, awesome too. Always use a level at least three times longer than the board <laughs> that you're using it on. I will need 64 and a quarter, it's tight. Went and got the four foot level because the sill, well, it's too short for the six foot level. Tack a couple of screws or nails, whatever your fastener is. Now I have something to hold it. Because I popped off the spreader cleats, oh, that was easy. I can wedge it in there and basically friction fit it. I mean, you can see, I mean, I'm not making it look super amazing, but you can see it slides in without beating things around too much. That's right, this ain't my first rodeo. How many times do you think though that I've tried to do this without putting those screws or fasteners in so that I can hold the board? <laughs> Way too many times. So this is this is much easier. Sometimes I even think ahead. Sometimes, every once in a while. Just often enough to know I can still do it, but not so often that I, I don't know. On the last house, I beat the spreader cleats in with that little tab, that tab that represents the inside of the panel. This time I'm beating them flat. I only need the spreader cleat to fit over the top. You could see that at the beginning of this video. It gouged the panels last time. It worked, I don't really have any complaints about it. It's just, I don't wanna gouge our panels. So I'm gonna beat the tabs down this time. That little screw is a nice helper. I can pull up with my hammer or pry up to make sure that I'm level. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fasten this whole thing off. Now, something I was taught to do way, way back when I was younger is to always flip the level and double check. Even though this is a Stabilo level and I have implicit confidence in it, I visited where they're made in Anweiler, Germany, and I watched how they epoxy set those and how somebody dials it in to 0 0.03 degrees. A good habit to get in is to always check your measurement tools. 
a level, we're relying on it, right? To be either level or plumb and a lot can go wrong. So I think it's still worth, even with the world's most reliable level, I think you always check the vials. So just flip it over or flip it around as the case might be and make sure that the bubble reads the same way on both. Now I'm popping those screws out, spreader cleats are installed. I can go ahead right through the hole in the tab and I'm gonna screw these forms together. I think the spreader cleats would have been fine, but there's a whole lot less stress when it comes to placing concrete because you've taken some extra steps. Remember that footing that blew out on this house? <laughs> I'm learning my lesson. Slowly, but I'm learning. Now what I'm doing is we need access for the concrete vibrator to consolidate the concrete at the buck out on the right, on the left, and of course the sill buck out. Of course, I always, I never get these things tight the first time. Anyway, I have an inch and a half Diablo spade bit. I love Diablo bits, so I'm gonna drill holes often enough. I think, what did I end up doing? Maybe like every 16 inches, and that meant that we could get the vibrator in, and I'll show you how that all worked out once we actually get to the video where we place concrete. Way more exciting than this. Spoilers, it worked really well. Rule number two of the top 10 rules for awesome framing and doing other things in life awesome too is always double check yourself twice. Rule number one, or is it rule number two? Never second guess yourself twice. That's rule number three. No, it's rule number one. Tri triple check. Also triple check yourself twice, as the case might require. 33.96, I think I'll order 35. So that's fairly tight, but basically that's how you do it. Okay, so the last thing I need to do today, it's Friday, we just passed inspection. I'm tired, this has been a long week, a really good week, but long week. We're gonna pour concrete Monday at noon. So the last thing I wanna do today is I want to figure out how much concrete these walls are gonna take. So the way I like to do it is I add up all the easy stuff. In this case, I know what all of my 10 foot walls are. So what I'm gonna do is just add all this up on the plan because, you know, we built according to the plan. Okay, so I have 84 lineal feet of 10 foot wall. So the formula for calculating yardage is length. To, it, well, let's, let's say it this way. In this case, basically it's cubic volume, right? So it's length times width times height but maybe just to make it relatable to these walls, it's the total linear footage. So how many linear feet of 10 foot wall do I have? That's 84. My wall is eight inches thick and I'm 10 feet tall. Now I've snapped a line one inch down and that, that accounts, basically that's a reset point to get perfectly level, no matter if our footing is a little off. So, but we're gonna call it 10 feet because I want just a little extra. Okay, let's just double check myself. I have eight feet plus 24 feet plus two feet plus 12 feet plus six feet plus 16 foot six and one half plus four feet plus 11 foot five and one half 84 feet so here's how you do this 84 feet times eight inches of depth that's how thick our walls are times 10 feet tall, 27.74 yards. So I'm gonna write down 20.74, and yes, I do the decimal, because if, if I go tight now, then I have a more accurate idea for how much concrete there is and how much I want to order extra. If I round everything as I go, I mean, you could do that too. I just find that for me, I would rather make like, okay, I know it's 35 yards exact or pretty close. How much do I want to order extra? By the way, we'll see how close we are on that. So 20.74 yards for the 10 foot wall. Now, as you can see, I have 10 foot walls behind me, but then I step down to eight, then I have a window opening, and then I have six foot, then some four feet, then I'm two feet 
<laughs> and then if I go all the way back to the start, I go 10 feet for eight, drop down to six, and then they're dropped down to eight, then six, then four. So I'm gonna just calculate each one. I've already included the 10 foot wall. So now I'm gonna take the eight foot, I'm gonna measure the length. I already know the height and I know the depth. Then I'm gonna go six feet, I'm gonna measure the length. I already know the depth and I know the height, et cetera, et cetera. I think that should make sense. That's just the way I do it. I don't know that it's the best way. I think it's the best way, you know, measure each section. Now, one thing that you could do is you could measure inside corners and outside corner, I always measure outside to outside, and that does give me just a little bit of a buffer. So that's just me. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add up, I still have to do the two foot, but I'm gonna add up all the jogs because now I confuse myself. So I have one number for the 10 foot, one for that eight foot, one for the two foot buck out, one for the, that little four foot by four foot, that's the six foot wall, that's the four foot wall, four foot wall, six foot wall, eight foot wall. Okay, that adds up. So now I just need to run and measure that guy. So I have 35 feet of two foot tall wall. 35 feet times two feet times eight inches, 1.72 yards. Okay, so now just gonna add this all up from the top of the list down and then from the bottom of the list up. So 20.74 plus 1.77 plus 1.39 plus 2.59 plus 2.57 plus 1.87 plus 1.72 33.96 Okay, I'll add from the bottom up. 1.72 plus 2.17 plus 1.17 2.17, plus 1.77, plus 1.88, plus 1.67, plus 2.59, plus 1.39, plus 1.26, plus 1.77, 20.74, 33.96, I think I'll order 35. So that's fairly tight, but basically that's how you do it. Happy Friday, everybody. So, Inspector just left. He was here for about an hour. He shouldn't have been here that long. I think he was just kind of interested. I kept peeking. I was on the other side racing. I kept peeking through the slats like, what's he still doing? I mean, it looked like he looked through every detail on the plans. And that's not a bad thing. So, anyway, in the past inspection, I'll have to figure out concrete before I get out of here. So, I think I'll do a video on that. I had a few requests. Maybe a, maybe a few more braces. But then Monday, we're going to do a, a once around. You guys will see from the drone footage. We're not even interested in cleaning this up. Sorry, neighbors. Not that bad, but this was a, this was a good week, but a tough week. Stripped this guy on Monday, tied bar Tuesday, formed the entire thing on Wednesday, and then Tyler and Noah and I got it mostly braced and scaffolded yesterday, and then I'm just puttering around here. So have a good weekend, everybody. It's going to be 70. So haven't seen 70 degrees since 2004. <laughs>